Hello and welcome back to the channel or to the channel at all if you're new. My name is Adam Hancock and today we're talking Southwest Florida real estate, mostly. Uh, I guess you could apply many of these subjects to real estate overall. But it occurred to me this week when I was um, working through some stuff that, um, you know, I have so many of these individual conversations with these like these very narrow topics that seem like they apply to one person, but they probably apply to a lot more people. And I've been working through like the many different ways that maybe that a mountain out of a molehill. I have one conversation, but like how many more people would benefit from this conversation? And if you, uh, my main YouTube channel, the Florida Relocation Guide, um, if you followed me at, at any point early on in like 2020 on there, I mainly just was like this. I was just walking neighborhoods and uh, I was in my truck a lot of the time and I was touring, uh, um, we do a lot of new construction. So I was all over like Lakewood Ranch and Venice and Tampa Bay. And it just was such a pattern that I was trying to um, kind of share what people's experiences were because a lot of people at home were like, oh, well, this sounded like it was one, it's like everything sounds so unique until it's not. So I wanted to bring that back a little bit. So this is a brain dump, it's ruminations. I have a text version of it that I've been putting in this new community group if you haven't joined that. But uh, I thought a virtual version would be, you know, it's just not the same as reading, you know, so give you a different style basically. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hop in, I'm gonna popcorn around a bit and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit random, but I'm gonna try to bring it all together. So topic number one is the entrance of Homes by West Bay, the new construction builder into the Sarasota, Florida general metro, which was not previously there. And it's interesting because we've been, uh, like our agents and our team have been touring a lot of people and both from Lakewood Ranch to South Venice, people are really into the, the builds they're doing in the Sarasota metro but they're doing them in a way that is luxury and high end. They're in the Everly community in Welland Park, which is like a custom only community. And the more I heard about that, like I was, I was like, it's, it was confusing to me because my context was the, I've probably bought more houses than I should at this age range, but the second house I ever bought 15 years ago, probably, I, it was a house I built and it was homes by West Bay. But the reason, that I, it wasn't that I didn't like them, like I, I really liked the style, but the reason I built is because I couldn't afford the other two builders in there, which I think one of them was Rylan, which is now owned by Lennar. A lot of Lennar's corporation was built from like um, acquisition because there was Rylan, there was Cal Atlantic, which was Standard Specific. I think Standard Specific and Rylan combined into Cal Atlantic, something like that. And then Lennar bought them all. But but those were like regular kind of normal. I couldn't afford David Weekly at the time. I couldn't afford uh, K-Hub. They don't build a ton in Florida, but K-Hub Indian, they're like um, kind of Northeastern style, like a lot of brick and stuff. You see them a lot in Texas or whatever, but they were building up in Wesley Chapel is where I, I bought my home by West Bay in a community called Union Park, which was the, Union Park is built by Metro Places, which I believe was the first neighborhood they built before any of the Lagoon communities, which is uh, who heads up, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more here, but they. All the Murata and, and um, all those uh, Epperson, that's all this same builder that built Union Park up in uh, the Westy Chapel area. It's lovely. Wait for this truck to pass real quick. Um, but they went into Sarasota and they went in like a luxurious manner. So I think the combination's interesting. So it's just food for thought. So they're building in um, Star Farms, which is in Northeast Lakewood Ranch. So uh, Star Farms Master Developer is the parent company for DR Horton. I forgot the exact name of the parent company, but uh, so you see D.R. Horton in there, but you also see, which D.R. Horton is like one of the most spec builders of all time, just like Lennar. So you would view them like from a custom level, you'd view them here, like off camera. Um, but that's not their business model, right? But then you see Arthur Ruttenberg in there and they're viewed up here as far as Lake Ranch goes, super custom. Um, so you have like $300,000, you have $3 million and then Homes by West Bay enters in there, and, but they're not doing like their normal process. So every other concept I've seen with Homes by West Bay they're the most similar to me as David Weekly or, or Neil, maybe even more Neil communities uh, in that they're like have a very Florida style coastal aesthetic. Even the names of the models up in Westy Chapel were like Key West and these kind of things. Right. But they were like this, like not in a negative way, but like a mid level kind of that kind of builder. But they've come into the Sarasota market in both Star Farms and Everly and Welland Park and gone a little bit more high end. And if you can combine the coastal aesthetic with the high end, I think you're potentially in a um, Neil signature land, like the alcove, Aria, the, the back end of Country Club East in Lakewood Ranch. I know this is a narrow conversation, but um, anyway, just food for thought, something to, something to think about. Okay, next up is just the subject matter of 55 and up active adult communities in general. And we could say all of Southwest Florida, Central Florida, like all in play. 
You know, for Southwest Florida, if you look at the median age, you know, the idea of 55 up for, for the purposes of like what most people are seeking is a little bit overblown because there could be potentially you trying to hedge your bets between less young people being there, but which a lot of people think is most people's intention. In my experience, it's not. It's just uh, a lot of it's amenities. It's um, certain things you could get in 55 and up lifestyle based communities that typically maybe more likely come with a golf community or something like that. But they're not really saying like, I don't want to see anyone under 55 in this area. They're just trying to say, what's my guarantee that I can find like-minded people, intentionality, they're into the things I'm into. And if I'm relocating out of state, it's like being a, David Salkin on our team always says this, it's, it's like being a freshman in college again. You know, it's such a good comparison because it's not a guarantee, especially if you're not like me who are just talks to anyone it's not a guarantee you're just gonna all of a sudden just meet all these people that are like you you don't know anyone technically if you're an empty nester a lot of people are a little bit nervous about that and the 55 up it feels like it guarantees a community now when you move to a sarasota or venice or something like that i would say a lot more communities live exactly that same way provide those same benefits but they're not technically 55 and up so all that to say i wouldn't alienate any search just as a precursor here in saying just like I hate master plan. I would, I would venture a little bit more into what that means versus your perspective, what that means. Because you don't want to cancel out communities that maybe are perfect for you in advance. Okay, the next one that's hopefully a lot quicker than the, the previous one is more of an entertainment based one that was brought to my attention by uh, Jeff Cave, who's a gentleman on my team. He's amazing if you've ever dealt with him. But I have a six and a two year old and Jeff does not have a six and a two year old. So he is out and about way more than me socially. So, uh, but he sent me an article and it was about Backyard Social, like an entertainment nightlife venue, that restaurant, all that kind of thing, that's come, that wants to come to the Waterside District in Southeast Lakewood Ranch. Now, super quick history lesson about Sarasota's landscape is that it's not a huge area, traditionally. It was a sleepy beach town at one point, got more in vogue, but it's, it's a retirement place, but it's, it's kind of in a cool way. It's very artistic and intentional and it's bougie, don't get me wrong, in a lot of parts, but it's, it's different. It, like the, the, land, the fabric of how it was created and, and, and where it was based and the John Ringling being such a big part of it and the amount of density of art galleries and music venues and it like, feels like more of a choice than just like an average beach town that you could find in Florida. If that makes any sense, it, it was that, but that, that's also the reason that people are, that really, really, really like it. And new things that change what that is and what that was are not, I don't know good or bad, but they, uh, a lot of people don't like them. Well, the introduction, introduction of Backyard Social to this conversation is nightlife. 2 a.m., live music, that whole kind of thing. And what Waterside did a little bit to Sarasota was, you know, all of that original stuff I described, well, Lakewood Ranch, the big master plan I mentioned, didn't exist at all. Like, going out in that area where Lakewood Ranch existed when I was growing up was far. You had downtown Sarasota, you had the beach villages, that's where the entertainment was. If you wanted to go out, like Siesta Key Village, maybe a little bit of downtown, but nothing crazy. And, um, and, and that's what it was, you know, it wasn't Tampa, it was not Miami, it was not Jacksonville. Well, if you lived in the suburbs, you went to Sarasota for everything. You went to the, the Barrier Islands for everything. So they started doing these downtown districts out in the suburbs and that inter and downtown Waterside is on its own, f I mean, this is a full on downtown, 25 foot sidewalks. It's got a splash pad, volleyball courts, uh, has uh, a distillery, a brewery, a uh, Mexican restaurant. It's all on the water on big lakes. Farmer's Market on Sunday from Lake Ranch moved over there. Um, it's lovely, it's safe for kids, but also fun. Uh, it maybe looks like it offers a little bit more fun if you live in suburbia for younger people, which isn't commonplace in Sarasota. All of that good and well, right? Well, uh, this uh, Backyard Social comes in with this proposal. Agave, the Mexican place, does the same thing. They're already active, right? Both these places want to stay 2, 3 a.m. And, um, and they want to do what maybe the Daiquiri deck does in Siesta Key. They want to do live music. They want to stay up late. And the problem with that for people is that right by that district is the alcove and Avanti and all those lower waterside neighborhoods that are brand new, that are developed by Pat Neal, who's one of the biggest people that's opposed to this idea, that feel like this, all of it's cool until 
that late hour thing exists, even the article are quoted saying like, that's not Sarasota. So, um, interesting if you if you ever looked into it but like it could be it's interesting because you could be seeking the opposite of that or that and you saw in Fruitville Commons and and the, Fruitville Commons is a district that's south of Lakewood Ranch south of the university but backs into the butt is that right the butt <laughs> it's a weird way of saying it but backs into the butt of Waterside and they just opened at Twin Peaks which uh, I was surprised a little bit. I mean, so I think Sarasota is getting a little bit uh, more progressive like any normal city would with this kind of interest. But um, that kind of stuff is unusual for Sarasota's history. So if, whether you're watching this clip and you're saying like, oh, I'm excited about those changes or I'm not, I think it, it de there's divisiveness to it. So that's why I wanted to bring this one up. I do think it's interesting. I do think that you could have as much opposition as you want and uh, the demand and the economic needs and the commercial infrastructure uh, is gonna allow for that to exist in some manner, regardless of what people wanna say and, and how powerful the developers may be in the conversation. It's just a matter of can they balance that with the, the homes that surround it, the distance and the proximity to them, and do the people that live in those homes, do they view those homes as a value being close to that stuff or not? Like my parents are out in this yes key area and they're parallel to the village, and they view that as a value. They like it. Like, even at, if it's late at night, like my, they, they like, like it because they're like doing the beach thing. If you're in Lower Lake Ranch, do you think you're getting um, exclusivity and seclusion? And then you're next to that or not? Okay, shifting gears from a trend touring out of state perspective, I was speaking to Fernanda, who she, she, she sells from Naples, Sarasota, Tampa, the whole thing, right? But she, one of the unique things about her to my real estate brokerage is that she lives in the Palm Harbor Dunedin area, which is like the coastal old Florida romantic part of Tampa Bay that's above Clearwater Beach. So she's got an interesting perspective. Military relocation, uh, fluent in Spanish, by the way, if, you're, uh, if, if it's relevant to you. But she was talking about a real trend. She spends a ton of time at Wesley Chapel, and, which is the basically Lakewood Ranch of Tampa Palms and Wesley Chapel are probably the Lakewood Ranch to Tampa Bay. But if you're relocating and you don't need the city of Tampa, like that's not the attraction, and you end up in Wesley Chapel, most of the time it was because of price. It was some benefit to price, mostly, in my opinion. Because Lakewood Ranch, the average price point was uh, it's still relatively high, but it was six, seven hundred k Parish, even to Wesley Chapel, and then you're like, would I rather have the Wesley, the Lakewood Ranch of Tampa Bay or the junior Lakewood Ranch of Sarasota? So that was people's juxtaposition. Well, with the, the shifting in the market and the, the affordability being introduced to Northeast Lakewood Ranch and what Parrish is becoming, we're seeing a real trend with our clients of saying that they, they visit all these areas and they seem to go to Wesley Chapel a lot of times. This isn't in a silo again. And this is if you didn't need access to the city. And they end up wanting to lean more in the Sarasota direction. A lot of the times they're going, I would Parrish beat Lando Lake, so Odessa or Zephyr Hills and Wesley Chapel for all the same reasons. Um, and I think a lot of, a lot of the times it's, it's, the, it's the unknown, really. Lakewood Ranch looks like a thing. It looks like it does online, like in person. I mean, maybe, maybe with the rare scenarios that it, uh, it's better when you get here. And that's what Welling Park's Playmore District probably is too, to Venice. Wesley Chapel, because it already existed, it wasn't owned by one family alone. There's certain districts that are more feeling like that, but the whole area, you get a little bit more lost. Are you in Lutz or Wesley Chapel or Orlando Lakes? And if you can understand what it is and that's a value to you, I think it's really valuable. And I do think overall it's far cheaper than most areas of Sarasota and Naples to how they orient to their own town and the benefit to them. But we are seeing a lot of that trend. Um, so if you're curious about that idea, of, I like this here, what else can I get in all the other regions of Southwest Florida? Uh, this would be something that maybe prompts those questions for you. Okay, and then we could talk schools for a minute. You could go a lot of ways with this, but one big benefit we have to public schools in, let's talk, sorry, school Sarasota County. One big benefit we have going on right now, number one school district for the first time I've ever seen it, 68 school districts in the state of Florida, number one overall public school district ranked this year. I think niche.com or great schools, one of those but it beat out St. John's County, which is St. Augustine, Nocatee area for the first time I've ever seen. So you're probably okay for the most part. And Sarasota County would basically be 
Waterside's District of Lake Orant and South. Sarasota City Limits, lots of the beaches. Englewood, Osprey, Nokomis, and Northport. Well, we're seeing uh, community-wise Sky Ranch in central Sarasota, which is mostly a Taylor Morrison outfit, multiple communities. There's an Esplanade, there's a Casilla, townhomes, other stuff. Which they're expanding that. They're going to expand that a lot more east that way. And there's Hi Hat Ranch, all that kind of be over there. Grand Park, similar. Northern Palmer Ranch, but new construction. That's Neil Communities who builds Windward, Indigo, Grand Palm, etc. Abilena, all those kind of things. Uh, Star Farms out in Northeast Lake Ranch, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, Park East, same area. Sapphire Point, similar area. Continue to be really popular amongst families. I think Venice is incredibly underrated for schools. You have Venice Senior High School that's on Venice Island, which is every, every, every kid that's going to that school can walk to the beach, which is very rare. You have Laurel Nokomis in, south of Palmer Ranch. That's a 9 out of 10. You have Pine View. I think it's the number one elementary school. It's a public charter in the entire United States. Venice Middle, they're all in the conversation. So if you're looking for a little bit more peaceful escape from one master plan USA, but maybe you still want new construction, and you want like kind of a raise your kids like you're in like the Panhandles beaches or like Winston-Salem or, or sorry, not Winston-Salem, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, or like some, of, some parts of Chesapeake Bay. I think it's got that vibe. It's got like a Northeastern vibe area. And that's a lot of what Naples provides too, but the school districts, are amazing. I think it's a peaceful way to live. Uh, we have an agent um, named Jeannie on our team, Jeannie Egan, and she has a, a high school daughter that she relocated in the middle of high school, which would be incredibly difficult in my opinion, that is like absolutely thriving. I think it's like captain of the soccer team and she, she told me more, uh, but, um, but it's doing great and, and, and loves the whole thing. And I think she'd be a great mouthpiece for that conversation. Uh, she relocated from New Jersey. so. Anyway, food for thought there, just wanted to mention that. There's many, many other schools. Southside in the west of the trail area, elementary is amazing. Um, I was a prep school person because I went to, I grew up Catholic, so I went to Carmen Mooney. Sarasota Christian um, is, a, is one uh, outdoor academy. There's multiple new schools being built in Lakewood Ranch, in central Sarasota, all over the place. So any more information that we can help you there, let me know. Okay, the next one is I, it's kind of an answer to a question I just wanted to make public because I think it's an interesting question, a thought exercise at least. 35 years old, relocating from Ohio, not married, no kids. Where do I live? How do I meet people? What do I do? Pondering, uh, and moving to the Sarasota area, pondering the conversation of do I do a Grace Water? So Grace Water is a new construction community but it's one of those ones that tries to get a lot closer to downtown. It's like the three, four mile range. Do I do that? Do I go condominium, like the Quay? Uh, the Quay district is that, you know, super underrated. 14 acre waterfront, it's in front of downtown, behind the bay. So you're talking three miles to Lido Beach, St. Armand Circle, six miles to Siesta Key Village, mile to downtown, if I'm being conservative. Uh, multiple luxury condominium buildings amenities, there's a Ritz, there's the Beso, One Park, all kinds of things going on there. So do you go there? And basically, generally, if you, if you picked right or wrong, like, like where would the other people that you'd want to meet if you were this demographic be? So I was trying to think to myself, it's a, it's, it, is, it is a really interesting question. I was trying to think to myself like where I would go <laughs> because I'm, I didn't really live that life. I, I was, yeah, I'm from Sarasota, so it's hard to step away from that mindset, but I also moved away immediately when I was um, 18, and I didn't come back till 31, but I was well into marriage when I came back. So if I moved again, and I was this demographic, so I would look at like, one, you're not, I don't think you're going to guarantee that at all, especially if you're doing well. Like if I was the same age and I was not married and no kids, I don't, I don't think I'd be doing well as I am now. That support system, I, if you've read, listened to any of my story, I would be maybe trying to surf full-time somewhere, and uh, maybe none of this would have happened, but I was a drifter. But um, let's say, you, say in, a, in this faux scenario I was. I was this exact demographic, and I was moving back with everything I know now. I think if you're doing well, it's going to be tricky, because where you want to live, and assuming those people are all going to be 35, and and like in your similar kind of 
thing. It's probably in Sarasota. It's not going to be. It's not going to be commonplace. I think it's going to be a social thing. I think it's going to be the company you keep. There are this demographic everywhere. There's every demographic everywhere, but it's not going to be random. You're not going to be able to pick a neighborhood. If you're living in a luxury condominium on the quay, then these people are uh, uh, double this age, most likely at the end of a career or or some sort of snowbird savant that probably has multiple places. Um, but what I would do, so I would look at this, as I digress here. The Gracewaters would be interesting. I don't think it would necessarily hit this demographic, but it would give you a full single family normal kind of household that would be close by. Um, but what you could do is you go to the progressive up and coming, this could help you economically too. You could go to the progressive up and coming districts as they relate to Sarasota, i.e. Uh, the Rosemary district of downtown. The main part of downtown, Maine, Palm, all that kind of area. If you go too crazy, you're going to end up in the people that like lived their whole life and dreamed of moving to this area. And they're not going to be 35 and single for the most part. But if you go to Rosemary, it's a little bit hipper, but not in a like city, city way. It's just, it's just one step different than the, everything that everyone deems important. But everything that everyone deems important isn't necessarily the cool part if you're 35. The Quay, I think, exclusively puts you in that conversation of being like, it's probably not your demographic, but, it doesn't, there's not, but you're also really close to all the stuff. Like, you're probably, you you're probably going to meet people on the beach villages, one, that probably Siesta Key Village more than you do St. Armand's, but, you know, whatever. And then, um, you know, Waterside, whatever, right? Like, again, company you keep, but I, I would separate the two, maybe living from meeting. But just being in close proximity, don't completely take it off the table. But if you went, if I was going to try to choose the perfect scenario, I would go Rosemary District. And again, because it, because why it would be valuable to this guy, super nice guy, by the way, uh, why it would be valuable to this guy is the same reason that it might not be valuable to the minds of the majority of people moving to Sarasota, so he'll benefit financially. So he can hedge his bets. It's an investment. Rosemary's like that. Also north of downtown Sarasota, below the airport. So there's condos I'm going to talk about here in a second that Jeff Cave also got deep in that told me everything about. Um, I'll talk about it right now. Akoya residences. So one of the most interesting areas go, so if the, the best part of Sarasota, right, is this magical triangle in the minds of the general public is that if you want everything that Sarasota has to offer, you want downtown, you want the beaches, you want everything, you don't want to be too far, right? You don't want to really be on one or the other. You want to be in the middle of all of them. That's that west of the trail area. Like use um, Cherokee Park as a good example. Southside Elementary School means that you're, you're, you're really close to downtown and you're really close to Lido, Longboat Key, and Siesta Key because you're close to all the bridges and the access points, right? It's not just close to water, it's close to functional water. I've talked about this on my other channel a lot. But Say you go three miles above that conversation. What you do is downtown is closer to Lido than it is to Siesta Key, but it's not too far from either one. If you go three miles above downtown Sarasota, then you get, a, you get five, six miles from access to the, the beaches because you got above the bridge. So you got to go down to the bridge. Well, now you're not six miles from Siesta Key, you're 10. And now you're not a mile from downtown, you're four. So that's a sacrifice. Also, Going north, not south, is way more up and coming. That's, it, like you go south, you get to like Palmer Ranch or even Golfgate. It's pretty old school Florida housing. It's not, it doesn't look like Lakewood Ranch, but it's not dangerous, that's for sure. If you go north, it's choppier. It's like Western Bradenton. It's just, everything doesn't look the same. Like there's an airport, there's it's random stuff. Onesies, twosies. But on a map, it looks unbelievable. It's like, it's like Apollo Beach. It's, Right by the water. So you can be west of Tamiami Trail, but north of downtown by three miles, it changes the price point, not 200K, but a million dollars probably. So this Akoya residence is a good landmark for this conversation if Matt happens to be watching or anyone's relevant to this conversation. So um, 54 luxury condominiums. I got some notes here because like, uh, yeah, <laughs> this new this information is new, but 54 ish condominiums, 300,000 to 800,000 dollars, 300,000 dollars, three. Like if you look at where this location is on the map, it looks if you're not from here, you'd be like, oh, my, what am I doing here? Like, this is crazy. This is the reason that it's not a million dollars. It starts at three. 
Um, it's west of the trail, which is the closest you can get to the water and the beach without being on it. One to three bedrooms. You can do Airbnb rentals for the first 30% of the buyers that buy. You can do monthly rentals, which is incredibly unusual because of the specific geography. Um, so if you're spending part-time, like this gentleman might travel. Uh, completion date is December 2025, which isn't crazy. They only need 20, they've already sold five, they only need 26 to break ground, right? If you build a condominium, like it's not guaranteed that it's ever gonna happen. 10% uh, of contract, 10% of permit, 10% vertical. Balance at closing. Uh, one bedrooms are under 400K, two bedrooms, 500K, under five, three bedrooms, under six. It gets more unusual. Has a pool, has a gym. Two pets under 50 pounds are allowed. That's not commonplace. Parking. You can buy an additional spot of parking for 15K. Can't move walls, but you can remove the tub in replace of changing the shower. And then three design choices. It's real investor friendly, basically, right? But I, again, this is a great example of just, this is on my list, so I just wanted to mention it during this conversation. But that's what I'd be trying to do. Look in the districts that maybe the minds of the people don't deem a positive, but don't look, in the, don't look by going further away from the suburbs, but look by going, jamming your way into downtown, going east of Tam Miami Trail. Um, you know, going to the Rosemary District. Talk to Tana Showalter on, on, my, on my team at Sunshine State Company. She's my broker. Uh, talk to Jordan, uh, Jordan uh, McCormick. Talk to Casey Truman. Like, these are, these are folks that enjoy urban style housing. Maybe they don't have disdain for the suburbs, but they do like the style of the charm and the, the, the romanticism between urban housing, and they appreciate the fabric of how Sarasota was built. Like, if you can understand that level of depth, then what, what everyone may be choose, going right, you could go left. And not only will you get what you want socially, but in three, four, when you're 40, you'll get what you want financially. Okay, rapid round to finish this whole thing off. So I was asked a question I just thought I would hit. I always had a couple of questions around, if you snowbird, you bought a house, you snowbird, you're out of town, what happens, who handles it, how do you manage it, is it safe? I'm from California, I'm from New York, it's dangerous, I can't imagine leaving my home alone. If you're anywhere in the suburbs at all, gated community or not, very important, because a lot of people are like the gates versus not. That, I, I maybe un underestimated how much that mattered to people, just like the alligator thing, is that you gotta understand, like you're in Lake Ranch, or you're in a lot of the suburban communities in, in Sarasota, they all live exactly like it has a gate. Borderline gates are slightly annoying just because they break every four seconds, it feels like, but the big thing is no one's in your neighborhood by accident. You would not be randomly in the aisles or country club, Easter, there's a gate, but you would not be randomly in the aisles or summer, even Summerfield, the first neighborhood ever built in Lake Ranch. There'd be no reason for anyone to randomly be in there because of how it's oriented in the location. And that goes for most. On top of that, so a lot of like that crime and that bad stuff happens is predatory one, so they feel like it's possible, which I'm gonna hit in a second, but also pass-throughs. They're in your area, don't live there, because they're, they're moving to something else. They're, going, they're like passing through, right? We don't have that because of where these are located. But also, the big thing is more than 50% of your neighborhood probably does not work or works from home. So you have the biggest neighborhood watch. There's ring lights on every house. There's surveillance cameras on every house. Um, the chance that something randomly happens and, and, every, and your neighbors don't come out like from the woods like is, is incredibly rare. Also, someone mentioned humidity to me. So, um, I'm only familiar with like Florida and Texas and so this is a little bit of a one that I'm more unfamiliar with like people not running HVACs full time or having more than two HVACs in a house or something like that. But what you're most likely going to do, humidity is not going to be an issue, right? Because you're going to run your HVAC like it's 90 degrees, you know, 11 months of the year. So your HVAC is going to normally run. You're just probably going to set it at something conservative like 74, 78, whatever it may be. And on most units now you can run them remotely. The plumbing, all that kind of thing, there is a, uh, there's kind of like a, not a way cheaper maintenance thing that exists now, like that you don't have to like use your real estate agent for or a friend or something. These house watch companies, you can pay per, uh, per visit, kind of like dog, dog uh, like people that let your dog out on rover.com. You can pay like $30, $40 a visit and they'll flush your toilets, uh, run your sinks. They'll do the stuff that like, if you lived in the north, and you had to like keep your faucets dripping and you didn't and you weren't there that time. They'll do the kind of stuff where they'll just keep everything kind of moving. But as far as like humidity attacking your house and all this kind of thing, you could have a pool maintenance company that never leaves, right? It's $110 a month. Uh, a lot of communities include lawn maintenance. 
uh, you just keep all of that running like you're there. Like no one's really aware, and then someone's popping in just to move the plumbing and and um, but HVAC and stuff's not an issue. So um, I, I wanted to, I wanted to hit that one real quick and the gated community thing. I think just something to really think about. Like like no one's act, no one's ever getting to your neighborhood randomly. If it, it's uncomfortable to do so in Sarasota, and I haven't lived a lot of places that aren't like that. So I mean, beyond Tampa, like that makes total sense to me in Tampa. But all the issues existed for people that were it was happenstance. It wasn't people. Like the driving to your neighborhood to pull door knobs and stuff like that, like the amount of the cameras and stuff out now, and like everyone's out and about all the time in Florida. It, if, I was explaining to someone yesterday, it feels like um, that it's like uh, you drive around Lake Ranch like Tuesday at 11 a.m. and like the people are riding bikes, everybody's smiling and waving, and, and you're like, what do these people do? Is this like a, it feels like a Truman show, you know? Um, you're like, why is no one at work? Why is it, you know? Uh, uh, but that's the way it is. I mean, like I'm telling you, like the, your neighbors are your advocates. Um, I did a Venice, Florida A to Z guide. I think it was the most comprehensive version I've done yet on that one. Hopefully, the most valuable. There's a download. It's in the same group. It's in the it's in the community group. If you're not joining the community group, not only uh, I send you these videos, but you get uh, the the weekly versions. You get a you get my, all my brain dumps. You get the free guides. You get them very first. You can ask me questions anytime, hover over my face, press chat, ask me any questions. Anyone that's in the group can tell you. I try to answer as fast as I can, and I give you a way shorter version than this. Uh, so download that guide. Um, it covers, uh, ranks the neighborhoods, 2,400 records of all, every sale that happened in Venice is in that guide. Um, so free download. Uh, if you're moving to Tampa for families, um, I've been talking about that a little bit lately. I still like Wesley Chapel a lot for the suburbs. If you're looking, if you love Hyde Park and if you want to be close to the city, you love Hyde Park, Hyde Park Village, Palmastia, Palmastia West, and you want like a, maybe a slight alternative on price and just a little bit junior version, check out Riverside Heights. I think it's underrated. Seminole Heights, Tampa Heights, in the similar conversation, but Riverside Heights I really like. If you're a military family, we're still seeing a heavy preference to Fishhawk, Lithia, Valrico, Brandon, and Tampa Bay for McDill Air Force, McDill Air Force Base. What I'm speaking about. Um, and uh, there's just a lot of military friendliness there. It's not as far to the base as the Wesley Chapel is, but they're, they're also like, because they're such a big community, there's, there's groups at schools for kids of military friendlies, there's support stuff, all kinds of stuff. You move to a suburb, like the chance that you're running into a bunch of military folks is, if you're like a spouse that stays home and your husband's at the base all the time, very friendly for that. Uh, if you're looking for something for completely different, I always love Pal uh, Palm Harbor and Dunedin. It is a throwback town. So the brand new Lakewood Ranch community map has been released and it shows multiple communities that you may not have heard of and you may have, but it gives you a good idea of what's going on. Shellstone is on there, which is the, home, the newest version of Homes by Town. Uh, to Waterside, that's the one that um, butts into the lake that Wild Blue does. Also Calusa National Golf. So I talked about this on the channel with Chris Serra, who's our resident golf agent. He lives in Country Club West. And he's deep in like the new development of these areas. We talk about this a lot, but Lakewood National by Lennar, which is uh, right on that Eastern Lakewood Ranch area. They're gonna do a new one called Calusa National Golf. I think it's gonna be two courses again. And Lakewood National, super affordable, super renter friendly. If you wanna rent these out one time a month, 12 times a year, and uh, or every 30 days or whatever. Um, but they're doing a new one. And they're like in the top five, both of those courses in the top five on Golf Pass. So it's really nice. The newest 55 on the block, I mentioned Catalina's on that. Saddlestone, which I wasn't very familiar with. Saddlestone, Northeast area. Palm Grove's on there. If Indigo by Neal Communities and Windward had a baby, that is that. It's up on State Road 64. And that a map is attached in our group. I mentioned Akoya Residences. We have been seeing a big trend of quick move and new construction, but not just for, not just for logistics reasons. So if you want to go a little quicker, uh, Relocation for incentives and for timeline, new construction still remains like a really nice solution. But we found that the fiscal year of builders right now, we've probably done like 10. I think Casey Truman's done several like this for this month maybe. That it was like a uh, the right, right time basically. If you find out a little bit more about the builder, we're in a better market as far as buyers buy, buying new construction with builders that you can lean in and get principal decreases, get design incentives, something like that. And it's just something that per purely benefits the builder in a way that benefits them so much that it doesn't hurt you at all. Like they're not trying to win one over on you. 
and also timeline obviously is a, is a real favorite in this conversation. We've seen this at um, multiple communities. So Renaissance by Mattamy, which is the old, so there's something to think about. Communities that are at the very end of building. So Renaissance was the old part of Welland Park. Same with like Oasis by MI Homes. Welland Park Golf and Country Club is in this conversation as well. We've done a couple there. That's Lennar as well. Lake Spur that is in Welland Park. Epperson up in North Tampa in um, Wesley Chapel. We've seen that as well. And that's like a DR Horton, Lennar, and multiple communities. Um, let's see. I released a Cheapest Beach Towns video that I walk the beach <laughs> old school style that... Um, I was, I was planning on doing the top 10, but I uh, ended up ranking. So every single Gulf Coast beach town that exists where I believe that you could walk to the beach, circled on a map, determined it's either walkable or it's not, and you could own a house. I ranked all 25. So this is uh, all of the Naples, Fort Myers grader, Sarasota, Manatee grader, Tampa Bay grader, and the Panhandle. 100% of them on the list. So it says top 10 in the title of that video, but... I, since I had to learn all the information, I just went from number 25 all the way to one. Number one was Panama City, the interesting, which beat Venice in the Sarasota area for the very first time. So check that out. It goes pretty quick. I think it's, a, it's almost 25, which is incredibly rare for me. It's almost 25 beach towns in 25 minutes. So uh, a little bit more consumable than my average Joe. Um... Yeah, I think that does it. I think we'll wrap here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this take. I'm going to continue to massage this topic, but I plan to do maybe one of these a month or one of these a week rather, and I'm going to uh, develop this as we go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video a lot. My name is Adam Hancock. If you are curious in any Florida real estate stuff, check out the Florida Relocation Guide channel. I have a brokerage called the Sunshine State Company. And um, any other reason to follow that you're enjoying, I appreciate all of it. Thank you so much.